Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review for Life at the Lockup, Season 5, Episode 48. A part of me feel like it's only two episodes left because, one, the new season start, I believe, in like two weeks, okay? Also, because this episode, we have all other couples, and they only do all other couples during the end of the season. So, I mean, we get in towards the end. But let's get into the episode anyway, okay? Now, look, y'all know already to like, comment, share, and subscribe and stuff. Follow me on social media at Jenny's Corner on IG, Twitter, and TikTok, okay? Look, also, you know, it's always other content. Even if YouTube don't tell y'all I have content up, and y'all find out late, it is content up, okay? I was live on Saturday for live gospel chat. Go watch it. I had a whole little conversation about these men's around here, okay? And the other lives from this week, you know what I'm saying? I did Potomac last week. I will be live tonight. Not tonight, today, okay? Because it's Sunday. Y'all going to see this on Sunday. I'm live today at 4 p.m. for Love and Marriage Huntsville, okay? So come on right here for that. But right now, we are here with these fools who are getting on our nerves, okay? Um. Also, I'm here. Hey, you don't look no lipstick. Look, it is two or three. I have nails on. You know, I put green nails on this time and stuff. Okay, because my thing is now every time I come on live, put on some nails because you, know, you know, pointing is better when you point in with nails. <laughs> and I don't be having time to paint my nails all the time because these personal nails come in real handy. Anyway, let's get to the people who be aggravating us or whatever. Also, I was going to go live again and after show chit chat for Potomac, but now Mary the Medicine is back. So I'm thinking on Mondays, I may just combine those two in a review and upload that on Monday morning. That's my thing I'm going to do. But I don't know because your child, y'all, look, y'all don't be watching me like y'all used to. And I don't know why, but y'all need to get, get on it. Okay, anyway. The peoples. Uh, Justine and Michael can go away, okay? Look to a happy place, a loving place, but I feel like they have no storyline. To me, her being pregnant again is not really a good storyline to, because she was just pregnant before. It's the same thing, okay? Now, we know now his mama know, okay? And now he's telling her, you need to tell your mother, okay? Because my mama know, and if your mom feel like she's the only one who do not do don't know, that can be an issue. Again, she about eight months pregnant. She at the end, okay? So Michael saying like, you know, now maybe now we should let her know. I was like, child, what's going on? Now the thing is, when she was pregnant with this with the last baby. Her mama was upset, but her mama was upset for a valid reason. Like, girl, why are you having more kids? You not working? He first out of prison. Why are y'all pregnant? The mom had a valid concern. Now, was the mama kind of mean in her anger? A little bit, but her mama is probably tired of helping her dig her way out of the mistakes she make being too quick to do things with men, okay? And now the fact that that was baby number eight. This is baby number nine, meaning they have a combined total of nine children. That's a lot, okay? So, he like, look, this this, this is telling, okay? Because the, the youngest baby, who's 10 months, is about to have a birthday party to turn one, and she like, you know, your mama, I mean, he said, you, your mama gonna see you pregnant, so like, let's tell her. So, she calls her mom, face on the mama. Hey, mom, how y'all you doing? You coming down for my baby party? She turned on one. She's like, yeah, I'll be there. Okay, cool. Well, after the party, I'm going to have to rest a whole bunch because the following day, after my one baby turns one, the following day, I'm going to have a C-section to birth my ninth, the ninth baby. And I was like, wait, wait, what? You're pregnant? Wait, hold up. So you telling me after your baby that's one years old has her one year old birthday party, the following day you're scheduled to have a C section to birth another baby, which would be a total of nine for y'all. The mama was shocked <laughs> and upset. Now Justine said, "Mama, I didn't tell you because I did not want 
to stress myself out with how you feel, okay? I did not want you stressing me out because you're upset that I am pregnant again and adding a ninth child to our family, okay? And she was like, so you you just enjoy making your life more difficult, okay? You enjoy making things harder for you in life, okay? Because ain't nobody having nine kids these days. Now, that's true. <laughs> back in the day, well, back in the day, people were having a whole bunch of children because they wasn't kind of, I feel like condoms, birth control wasn't that big or whatever. And if your husband humped you, you got pregnant, the baby was just born, okay? There wasn't many women saying, you know what? I don't want to have nine kids. I don't want to pop out 13 children. Because, like, on my mama's side, it was about seven or eight of them, okay? On my bio father's side, it was also, it was six of them. On my dad's side, who raised me, it was also, let's see, mm, Auntie Gloria, Auntie Ray, got like six, seven. But like, the kids, 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 now, Manga Ricky has about 30 kids, okay? <laughs> That's because he's a hoe. Um, my point is, back in the day, you did see people, Ch- Catherine and Michael, Jackson Mama, you know, had all them damn babies. Back in the day, you just kept popping, popping, popping them out. But now you don't have to have a nine family brood of children if you don't want to, especially if you just had a baby. So while it's her body, her right, her choice to do what she wants to do, a part of me feel like they were just irresponsible and fucking with no, with no condoms, knowing they're both fertile. He fertile. She fertile, and they didn't want to put on no condoms. So this was not them saying, you know, oops, we're pregnant. This was them just being irresponsible, horny toads. That's it. That's all, okay? Um, The fact that she didn't care that they told her before, girl, you can't keep having any C-section. You could die. And here she's knocked up again, okay? Anyway, again, mom's upset. She said to Michael, and what, 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 why would you do this? What happened? Okay, what the fuck is wrong with you? Okay, Michael then said, well, you know, it was a, you know, it was a, a, a conscious decision for us to have another baby, which just means once she found out she was pregnant, they said, well, we're having it. I don't think it was, I don't, I don't think it was before she got pregnant. They said, you know what? Let's have another one. Yeah, I know the baby is, is fresh and brand new. Let's have another one, okay? That was my opinion, okay? He then said, you know, I feel like God sends us signs, you know? And this was a sign from God. So I left it in the hands of God. And I'm saying, don't put that bullshit. Mm-mm. Don't blame God. Don't say that shit to me. Um, Brit- Brittany, uh, Justine and Michael are just not responsible. And every with word, okay. Uh, the mama's on the phone anyway. Uh, Melissa and Louis, child, Miss, oh my god, I am so happy to be engaged to Louis from high school, ma'am. This call that me and Louis, please. You are 41 years old, please stop referring to that man as Louis from high school. Y'all are option, he's then been in prison, rehab, regular jail. Big jail, little jail. Okay, stop calling Louis from high school. Y'all are y'all are way. You were not prom. Queen. I was prom queen. Yeah, forty years ago. Please stop with the Louis from high school. It's just Louis. It's just Louis. Okay, so Melissa goes wedding dress shopping with a friend of hers, but she also has her sister go pick up. Lose my mom. I'm like, y'all don't even like each other. Why would you take his mama with you, your, your friend, to go wedding? Dre- now, I get it. I think maybe it's she- is her mama. I think they might- is her mama dead? I don't know. But maybe she just wanted a mother figure there. But I'm like, y'all don't like each other. Okay. Child, they at the wedding dress shop. Now, that was a pretty, she picked a pretty dress. Well, she tried on. That, that was a pretty dress she tried on. Okay, um, Louis Mama was rude. Okay, but Louis Mama don't like her. You know, she makes no questionable 
uh, uh, decisions on, do I like Alyssa? No, I don't like her. She know I don't like her. And so I feel like once someone lets you know they don't like you, you should not bring them to your special moments of buying a wedding dress. I don't care if it's the boy's mama. Bitch, you can't come, okay? Now, again, but the, the, she was not, she was rude. But she's always rude. Um, and I feel like maybe she invited herself and it wasn't Melissa who like to say, yeah, come. Girl, anyway, I would have said, no, you can't come. They did that because they filmed the show. Anyway, the sister, and in the background, Okay, the sister and the friend is talking while she trying to address or whatever. How did he afford a ring? How did he, how can he do how can he do that? I don't even know. And I'm like, bitch, I mean, he he not I mean, look, to me, the friends and the, the sister are some fucking haters. Okay. Now, while the mama saying why she here can dress already is too soon. Maybe she just wanted a dress. And that's it. And I'm saying, and I should know because I've been married three times. I'm like, ma'am, you can't don't keep saying that. You get married more than once don't mean you know how to have a marriage. You you may know how to get divorced. Okay. <laughs> but you can't talk as if you are successful and married. Three failed ones. Anyway. We then see the sister and the friend, I guess they assume no one can hear them. Child, how can he afford the ring? Did he steal it? Is it real? It's probably fake, okay? He must have asked the mama for some money, okay? He can't afford that. He can't afford that. You know, and they shouldn't even they should not be getting married. I don't like the I don't like the fact that he moved here to live with her. I was like, he's they he's been out 18 months. He's like successful for a person out of prison. He's working. He's not back on drugs. Like he seems like he's doing great or whatever. And for some reason, Melissa adds love that man. So why y'all being haters? Okay. Hating assholes on camera. Hating. Okay. And the fact that Melissa did not hear them, which is great. But I was like, I would out child. Do not invite people who don't really respect your decisions to your happy moments. That means his mama, your sister, your friend, because Tao fake and food because it one for oh my god, that's a great ring. Oh my God, Melissa, it's amazing. And the minute Melissa turned her back, girl, is it fake? I was like, bitch, fake friends. You know, and when Donna heard, then I'm saying, first of all, okay, he has been working, saving his money. He charges about 150 per hour for his training. He's doing that, you know, a few days a week. So he's been making money this whole time. And he's been saving. But I'm like, plus, he lived with Melissa. <laughs> he lives with Melissa, which means she proud, like her house is her house. You know what I'm saying? So it's not as if he's been paying heavy bills all the time he's been able to save and again even if the ring was fake why I said on camera you know now the mama like I still don't think they should get married so fast I'm like girl Melissa wants to get married ASAP why because it's Louie from high school anyway that was all with them uh Bianca and Daniel I don't even understand why they're still on the show. You know, it's been a month since he got since he got out of jail. And we know that the episode ended last time with Bianca being pissed off, storming out of the little restaurant because Daniel's friend told them, Y'all have to learn to like live together before y'all plan to be together forever. Like you can't just get married and think it's gonna all fix itself, which made her upset. Oh my god, my feelings don't matter. She really wants Daniel to be like, I love her. Don't speak about her. I'm gonna marry her. And she he's like, I don't think we're ready to get married. We do have to learn to coexist before we make this deep commitment to each other when we're fussing every day bitch okay and so she run i don't want to talk i am done i am so upset she runs to the car you know his friend told him nigga run <laughs> he didn't say negro but again you should run 
run far away from her. And then you feel like, you know what? It's just more and more evident that she's only 23. I'm 31, meaning she's a baby, you know? And when he said, she thinks if we get married, even if we get engaged, the issues we have will fix themselves and it won't. And she just doesn't see my point in saying, we need to fix these issues first and then get engaged. And I think he's already told her before, I was, I should have never proposed you in prison. So please stop bringing that shit up because I didn't mean it, okay, girl? So at one point, the friend's fiance go out and talk to her. Then Daniel comes out and talks to her. She's still pissed. Hey, this is so dumb. You know, why don't you love me enough to want to propose? He was like, girl... Is you gonna come back in here? And she's like, no, I don't want to. So she drove home herself. He then took an Uber home. Girl, they both are back in the house. And I'm like, why are y'all in the house, in the bed, and y'all outside clothes? They just came from sitting at a restaurant. And they both came in the house, left them same clothes on, and went and sat and lay in the bed. I was like, oh my God, y'all bed is corroded. Y'all bed has all of the outside germs. Do y'all... Take your clothes off. You should never come in a house and get in your bed with clothes that you had on outside. Okay, your clothes should barely make it to your bedroom. Okay, take clothes off your bathroom. Okay, or take them off at your front door. You know, take them off at the front the, the front door of your bedroom. And just do not get in the bed with your outside clothes on. And they was outside clothes on and oh, nasty. Ugh. Anyway, so they're sitting in the bed, and they all set clothes. And then she's like, you know what? There's nothing to discuss, you know, because you will only propose to me when you're ready. And I was like, when else should he propose? She feel like, well, he know I want to get engaged. So he should just propose. Bitch, if he doesn't want to, why do you want him to? I don't want someone to propose to me because they know that's what I want. I want them to want me enough to want me, bitch. Okay? That's the point. And I mean, meaning want to get married. So, but her point is like, you, you know, you will only propose to me when you're ready. You know? And it's crazy because my family stopped talking to me because I got with you, you know? And it's not fair that they stop talking to me because of you. And, you know, now that we're here, you know, because I moved here for you and I'm here now and we're not engaged. And because we're not engaged, I look stupid. I was like, ma'am, you look crazy before. And when she's, you know, now because we're here and not engaged, I look crazy. And he said, no, if we get married right now, that would be crazy. And I'm like, ma'am, he don't. I don't even think it's that he doesn't want her. He really feels like we gotta figure this shit out. Cause you look crazy, I'm look crazy, whatever. And it may not work. But she is a child who doesn't understand he's not wrong. He's not even saying we can't be together. He's just saying we're not ready for marriage. Okay. Now we then see two separate conversations. We see Daniel on the phone with his mama. We'll FaceTime. And he's like, you know, mom, you know, I just don't feel like I don't think we're ready. You know what I'm saying? To get engaged at all. And she don't get it. And she's pressuring me to do it. And she's not seeing my side of things. And mama said, well, maybe give her the promise, give her the promise ring. And then let her know, like, hey, this is the promise ring. I want you to know that I really do want to be with you. I want to be with you. I want to grow with you. Okay. I want to grow our relationship and everything um, and get married one day. However, I just don't think we need to get engaged and get married right now. But I want to build a relationship with you. Okay. And it's crazy because before, y'all know she said before, they've only known each other nine months. You know, so it's not even like they've been dating in prison for years. She met that man nine months ago. He's been out of jail for one month. And she's like, why have you not proposed? Why Why are we not engaged? What is going on? Okay, so Daisy and Mama, that's a great compromise. That's, I'm going to do that. I think that's fair. You know, I think it's fair. Now, when Bianca... Her homework came to town to visit. The homework came to town or whatever. And friend, friend, you know what I'm saying? I leave this up in two months and I don't feel comfortable getting a whole new apartment, a whole new lease with him if me and him ain't engaged. And I said, while 
I can understand that point. It's, I can. I also feel like it's not that he doesn't want to be with her. It's not he's not even really mooching off her. Well, not because he's breaking now, living, living, living. But she's not even like she dated a prisoner, but she doesn't get. He can't work like regular folk right now. He can he can get whatever job he can get. Um, he can't drive right now. You may have to drive him around. But this is stuff that you knew before you got out, girl. And I feel like it's just dumb. And and I get it. I don't want to move to the place with him. But I'm like, y'all don't have to be engaged. If y'all are in a committed relationship and y'all are building to get engaged, I think that's okay. If he's working. I think that's okay. Maybe not get a year lease, maybe get a four, a three to six month lease and take it, you know, time by time and let's see. Like, you know, yeah, okay, okay. don't get no whole year lease. You know, maybe even don't put his name on the lease, okay? Maybe have it just in your name for three months and you can maybe extend it to then six months, you know what I'm saying, to see how it works out. And that way, He's not like reaping all the benefits, but it's still your shit. Anyway, friend then said, Girl, I ain't surprised because you know what I'm saying. I think it feels like he is just running game on you. I, I'm not surprised he ain't proposed yet. I you should know you shouldn't. I was like, you do realize your friend is the issue. Like, it's really not Daniel. It's this bitch, Bianca. Okay? But friend is like, girl, you don't get engaged. Your, your friend is a toddler. Okay? The reason they're having issues, she is a toddler. He's seen red flags, red flags, red flags. And even though he is a DUI felon out of the prison system, he still realizes, I need to take my time. Okay, I need to take my time. And let's not forget, she reached out to him on the prison website. She told that man that she had all that money from the car accident. She willingly reached out to someone and now she's upset because they won't rush and marry her. Girl, you should not, because then he can get all your money. Stupidity. Brittany and Key Rock. Child, I'm so happy they get... Mm -hmm. They should not come back on next season. I feel like I know they will, but it probably feel like they have childish arguments. Um, I don't, I, I no longer like Britney. This episode made me not like her. Now, Britney has gotten a 30 day travel pass to, for them to go to Texas because she's not approved to move there. But they said, Hey, while we're waiting to get the approval to move, how about we get a travel pass so you can come there with me for a month? We can get things situated, situated. And if you're approved in the time frame, great. And if not, you go back and forth until you're approved. Okay. So they drove 20 hours to for it because they again, they're. Even though it's her visiting, they're still moving there because Key Rock is moving to the apartment, blah, 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 and he has a job to start. So, again, 20 hour drive, all this stuff. Um, she's the way to get approved for the for the official, like, permanent move or whatever. Um, Key Rock has a job. He's starting in HVAC, blah, blah, blah. Her cousin got him a job, blah, blah, blah. Okay. We then see his mama come visit the mom and the boyfriend. Okay, to see the new apartment. It was a nice little, you know, nice little starter apartment. You know what I'm saying? It looked clean. We didn't see no roaches or whatever. And you know, they ain't got no furniture. I think it was like a mat. It was like a mat on the floor. They don't have much because they they're moving. It's brand brand new. Not again. Don't forget, Brittany don't work. Okay, so when Mama and the boyfriend come by to see, oh, this is great. I'm so happy y'all here. The Mama also happy they did not get married. The Mama like I'm happy they did not elope because they should have a real wedding with family. Blah blah blah. Blue blue blue. Okay, and so the mom talking to to Brittany. And they were like, oh, yeah, we're going to have a plant here and a couch and blah, blah, blah. And then when Key Rock is talking to the boyfriend, like, yeah, you know, this has been tiring to move. You know, it's been, we drove 20 hours to get here. I spent about 1500 bucks 
coming here, okay? I'm still paying all the bills with the money in my savings. I ain't worked in months. And I'm going through my savings, going, going, going through my savings. Because again, remember, before, they lived with his mama. So I'm pretty sure they wasn't like paying no bills or whatever. So Kirak has been able to save money, you know? And so when he was like, you know, financially, physically, emotionally and mentally, I am drained from just the whole process of moving. Again, packing up, moving, driving, you know, getting denied for stuff, you know, just a lot of going on. Okay. It's hard moving from one place to the other in the same state, having to move from one state to the other and then worry about probation, parole, gas, all these things or whatever. So, um, crack mom brings up how, you know, this is a nice apartment. Okay. However, okay, y'all gonna need two incomes, you know, to, to afford here, to be comfortable here. Y'all gonna need two incomes or whatever. So, Brittany has good ideas for how to decorate, but again, y'all gonna need some money. Because again, they can't live off of Key Rock's savings forever. So, mama then said, so y'all need to plan A, B, C, and D, okay? And then the mama then said, so like, is y'all here for good? When Brittany then, well, we you know, I'm not, I'm not approved yet. You know, I got a travel pass. It's like, wait, so y'all here and you not even officially here yet? She's like, well, no, I have to wait to get approved and blah, blah, blah. She's like, well, that's, that's crazy. And the mama point was, y'all moved here. Y'all came here. Brittany gonna have to go back in three days because if she does not, she's in trouble. And that's if she does not get approved within the time frame. But the mom, the mom was like, "That is crazy." But whatever. So Brittany is then also still on probation. And then the mom was like, "Well, you on probation? You gotta pay some money." Uh, well, yeah, you know, I'm on probation, and if I pay the money off, I get off probation. And she said, if I paid it, you know, we wouldn't even we wouldn't even have to have go, we would not have to go through all this. But she then said, you know, I haven't paid it because if I paid off my restitution, you know, we would have we would have no car, we would have been removed to tax. It's weird to me because she's making it seem like if I were to save the money that we're spending living, that can pay off my probation. And I can get off probation, but she don't want to do that. Okay. And then in the confession, she said, like, well, I got 10, it's ten thousand dollars in, in resolution. And again, if you pay that, she's off probation. That's how Kirak got off probation. When Kirak say, I thought it was way more than 10 grand. And she said, No, it's just a 10. He said, Oh, okay. Well, tell them why you ain't paid it. Child, when she said, I can live normal. I can get my clothes from somewhere cheap or whatever, but I, I don't want to live. I, I don't want to live that life. I want to live a fabulous life while being on probation and needing permission to, to move. Girl, I said she's stupid. And the whole time, Kirak looked aggravated that one, I thought it was more than 10 grand that you owe, and it isn't. Two, you're saying out loud, I mean, I could save money and pay it off, but I don't want to. I'd rather have fancy clothes, Gucci, Gucci shirts, and Gucci, whatever, girl, fake stuff. Um, well, she she wants to look, she wants to be hood rich, meaning I want to look fly, but I have all this debt. And look, ain't nothing wrong with debt because a lot of folks had debt, but I feel like you can't not work and then have key rock work. And then feel like, well, I'm not going to pay off my restitution because I want to have fancy things. I was like, girl, no. You still should pay your bills. You still should. Cause who, who are you flashing, girl? Anyway, because when she mentioned her nails cost 500 bucks a month, bitch, you could have been paid off nubs. Press-ons. Girl, you don't get you some press-ons and save 500 bucks a month and pay off your Right, girl, in two months, that's a thousand bucks. You could have had that pay. She's been out longer than Key Rock. Key Rock been out 10 months. I think she's been out a year and a half. Had you not been spending 500 bucks on your nails, you could have at least had half of that pro bet girl. His mom would then ask Brittany if she's going to still go to nail school. Because you know what she said? And I'm going to go to nail school and be a nail tech. But for that, I'm going to go to hair school, do hair. She quit hair school, started nail school, 
And now he said, no, I, I dropped out of nail school. It was it was too hard. Yeah, I, I can do it. You know what I'm saying? I have no plans to get a job. I have no, I have no plans to get a job not at all. I don't need to work. I'm going to stay home, take care of Key Rock while he at work. I can cook food. I can cook the three meat girl. Now, I get it. She wants to be a stay-at-home wife. Fine, fine, fine. I don't think they can afford that is the point. I think Key Rock's okay. Because he could see Key Rock say, he's like, look, I'm okay with, you know, providing. However, she needs to work, okay? And even when she asked him in the confessional, you think I need to work? He was like, he shook his head, no. His eye and his body language, yeah, hell yeah. His whole body language. The hot girl, guess the fuck <laughs> you need to work, but I ain't gonna say that right now. The following day, what, it may either the father, I don't, whatever, it was later on, okay? He like, I have to get ready for work tomorrow. I'm tired. It's been a lot physically. And again, moving, you are tired that, that first day. And maybe the first week, okay? And he's like, I got to get some rest. I have to go to work tomorrow. I'm starting a new job tomorrow. And HVAC is not easy. I'll be up under buildings and shit and, and crawl spaces or whatever. So I have to have make sure I'm rested to work. She cleaning up the house. The house is empty. Okay, they don't have. They had went one pot, one pan, a mattress on the floor, and then like bags and stuff, and not many bags. They're scattered about. Okay, and she is trying to, I guess, clean. Which I get it. You, no one wants to be in a dirty house. However, if his point is, I am tired from driving, from the moving. And I have to work tomorrow. I need to mentally rest to be prepared to make money tomorrow. I don't get why that upset her. She then felt like you keep mentioning your work, work, work whatever. I don't, girl, why do you think him saying I have to go to work tomorrow is him throwing his job in your face? I'm like, bitch, he got to go to work. I have to cook and clean. We'll do that. What's the issue? I was like, girl, then her telling him, you would not even have a job if it wasn't for me. Because I told my cousin to help you. He said, no, 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 bitch. Okay, not not today. No, 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 no. Okay, I have a job because of my credentials in working in HVAC. You didn't do shit for me. I mean, she got, the, mm. his point was, you telling someone to hire me won't matter if I don't have the credentials to do it. And why I throw that in my girl? I'm like, they up here fussing over what? Because she's pissed. He would not help her clean up. When he was saying, I need to go to bed for, for work. This would be later. And I'm like, you, you, you trying to clean a, a you're trying to clean an empty house that will be empty tomorrow. If if I don't, and then her saying, I don't need to work. I don't need to work. I have not found a job that would pay me what I want to make and do what I want to do. Okay, I can be a stay. I'm a stay at the girl. I think they feel together, which does not matter. But Brittany is 100% um, lazy. Because Kirak says she quit every job she get. She complains. She, compl she get a job, complain, and quit. Job complain quit, and she like she's an adult. She owes ten grand and and uh, and, and uh, restitution. She needs to work, and I think I do think she's working now. But her saying I don't want to work anywhere if I I want to do what I girl okay be homeless. Cause that's what's gonna happen. Be homeless around here. Uh, Joey and Kimberly. Um, Joey, your child. Joey's the crackhead. I like getting high. <clears throat> uh, I'm a crackhead. He is a crackhead. He is an absolute. Cr I say I don't think anyone noticed this. Well, I, well, I think they should. He is a crackhead. Okay, ain't no if ands, could be's, should be's about it. That man's on. And even if he don't do crack, he is a drug addict. Okay, Joey is, and I kept saying before, I said Joey and Kim are the only couple who don't have um, joint confessionals. So I said before, I said, I think they must have broke up because everyone else has some kind of joint confessional except them. 
tech. Joy's on crack. Anyway, so remember, Joy left to go to urgent care. He did not want anyone following him, going with him or whatever. You know, it's crazy. Now, because it's my stomach hurt. Oh, my stomach hurt. He was on all day. Okay, it's now 8 p.m. It's 8 p.m. He's back at the house with no hospital. Anybody know if you go to urgent care, um, ER, you get a bracelet because the hospital has to have record of you being there. When he came back and nobody takes, no one takes it off until they at home the following day. Okay. So when he got out the car and he did not have not near hospital, I said, he went, hey, girl, he ain't going to have hospital. <laughs> then she said, did you get some medicine? Yeah, no, no. Because it wasn't ready yet. I was like, so you left hours ago, went to urgent care, don't have no urgent care or hospital breast on. You also don't have the medication. Crack. It's my fucking crack. Um, Kim brings up how earlier in the day, the, in the, that morning, it was a hundred bucks in, the, in their joint account. Now it's four dollars, meaning he went to the ATM and took money out. She don't know why. Okay. Um, he, you don't trust me. I can't, you, you don't trust me? He said, no, because you ain't, you been acting strange, okay? He's high as a kite. <laughs> he, he can't keep his eyes open. He's struggling, like, you know, I don't, what do you mean? You don't trust me? Girl, he's high, okay? He's high. Or if he isn't high, he's coming down from being high, okay? So she said, look. You know I left my ex. It wasn't because he cheated on me with all those women. He always cheated. You know, it wasn't because he was an alcoholic and getting drunk. No, because when he got drunk, he would leave me alone. I was like, bitch, what? It was because he was a, he got on drugs. I was like, well, Joe is on drugs too. What are you gonna do? Okay, you know, if you love me, you know, take the drug test. He said, fine, I'll take it. And when I take the drugs, leave me alone. Okay, leave, leave, leave me. No, he's a crackhead. Okay, um, and then tried in the house because she didn't went and got a test out the out the cabinet. And he like, you got some water? I said, don't you live there? <laughs> but when she, no, I got some juice. I was like, how y'all have a cold water? What kind of crack house is this? How do you not have cold water? Don't the kid drink water? Ain't girl. Anyway. Um, he then says, I, I, I ain't got to pee. I peed 30 minutes ago, so I can't pee. He's then walk around the house, drinking out of the out of the orange juice container because I, I got to make myself pee. I said, girl, and <laughs> what is going on? And like an hour later, now the whole, like for an hour, he's walking around the house outside. I need a cigarette. I don't have to pee. I don't know. Oh, Worth my lighter. It was so crackhead ish. Okay. He finally can pee. It was an hour later. He pees, right? Child. Joey looks. <laughs> he said, It's positive. How? I don't know how it's positive. How? Because you on drugs. He tested positive for cocaine. And he, child, when I say he needed, I got to go. Get out my way. I got to go. Can I, he looked high. He looked busted, you know, and like, I can't believe it. Now, he it only came back positive for cocaine, not the other drugs. But if he was on cocaine, like, he would be hyper. He would not be, like, sleeping. I said, no, he's probably coming down from his high. Um, and it probably was crack. To me, cocaine means crack. You know what I'm saying? Because um, that's where it comes from. You know, he leaves, goes and gets in a car. She got for him. So, you know what? You cross the line, make me take a drug test. You cross the line. You know what I'm saying? And she said, why Why did you take the money at the bank? It doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter. He pulls off. I was like, you let a crackhead pull off in a car you got for him after taking money out of the girl. He is a crackhead. Come hook or crook. Joey is on drugs. I also think that's why we don't see any other confessions, which is Joey. He ain't done nothing in a minute because Joey, this was Joey when he was clean. Because he's on the show, he's he's thicker. You know, um, child, smoke bone crack, and he gone. Anyway, uh, Teeny and Rob. <sighs> 
they go bowling. Her sister's in town from Texas, and that's a sister. And her, well, that's her sister, not her mama. And, you know, they sit around. Now, first of all, before the sister got there, Teeny and Rob told the kids, hey, what do y'all think about us having a baby? And they said, oh, okay, cool. You know, okay, that's fine. But in the confessional scene, they said, you know what? I think it's it's fine. However, like, mom should really get a job situated for before having another baby, okay? It's pretty quick. The kids even say, that, bitch, he just got out. We like him and stuff, but why you pray already? Girl, anyway, the sister gets there with the mama. And when she says, so what y'all been up to? Rob say, oh, folks don't have a baby. She says, hey, what now? A baby? Are, are you sure? Are you are you are you sure? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sh- yeah I'm pretty sure I want I want a baby. She don't. She wants one because he wants one. She don't want one. Okay. Now Robin walks away and with the kids so they can talk or whatever. And she's like, Are you sure? Now the sister who we, I think is she a lesbian? Anyway, uh, she was, she was, she was, she was just real gay like. Okay, but she said, like, Are you sure? About this, you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, you know, because Rob is home and he's been showing up consistently and stuff. He has never dropped the ball. I was like, he was in jail for 17 years. You, he hasn't had time to drop the ball yet. It's easy to be a great father from prison when all you have to do is call and send some gambling money. I'm like, girl, that man ain't been out six months. You can't say he hasn't dropped the ball. He ain't had time to drop a just yet, okay? And I'm not saying he will drop the ball. I ain't saying that, but you can't bank on how he was in prison to how he would be for life, okay? It was easy to be a a father from prison. You ain't doing nothing but talking, okay? And I'm like, again, Teeny is foolish because ain't no way I'm agreeing to have a baby with my fresh from prison uh, husband less than six months of him getting out. No, ma'am, no, sir. I would say, you know what? Once you've been home for 18 months, maybe two years, and we're excited in this, then let's discuss. Because she, that's just two years, girl, that's fine. You know? So, Teeny then says to her sister and the mom, so I'm only worried about him seeing, because as a black woman, having kids, it can be dangerous or whatever. So that concerns me. Um, and when she said that, the sister starts crying. I'm like, what the fuck happened? Why is she crying? Girl, she's like, oh, my God, I don't know what to do. Because I was there for you. When you... Now, apparently, the sister was there when she had the son. When the son was, when she was pregnant with the son and in labor, her heart rate, or was her heart, no, I think her pressure, I think her pressure went up. And they end up having to give her an emergency section because the baby's heart rate stopped. And so so I can imagine if something happened to you because of what happened last time. You think you're older now. So she was just having like a little little PTSD from almost losing Teeny and the, 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 the nephew before, you know. And if something happened, I don't know what I would do to you, girl. Ooh, that's hard. That's hard. Um, I don't think I don't think they should have a baby right now. Um, Rob then talking to the group to the kids and asked them, Hey, so what do y'all think about my mom being back around? Because I think because Rob point to in in his head was, I can't imagine having a kid and my mom not being invited around, included. You know what I'm saying? Rob wants his mom around. His wife don't like his mama because his mama don't like his wife. But at the end of the day, I still feel like that lady should have never hit his mama first. Cuss her out all day. You should have never put your hands on that man's mama. Okay? So the kids said, well, you know, we think it's fine. However, we think your mama owe our mama an apology. Because, she, you know, your mama, they both owe each other an apology. I don't like how, <clears throat> I don't like how her kids think. It's just Rob, Mama fought for what happened. No, your mama was at fault too. Also, in my opinion, the kids should not be even involved in none of this shit. They're kids. Leave them in the kids' place. You know what I'm saying? Y'all should handle this as adults, and the kids should not be involved at all. That's just me. And we do see Rob call his mom and say, hey, mom, it's been a while. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Your wife hit me. Uh, Laugh leads to Rhea and Troy. 
I don't know what pit of hell Zariah was born from. I'm not sure at all. I don't know why she is such a toxic, negative energy person. I have no idea. What I do know is um, I don't like her. Okay. And not saying Troy is perfect. I don't like Zariah. Zariah, Zariah. I don't. I don't. Um, her antics on the show is horrendous. Um, I saw a a live, well, not live, a video they did like a while ago, like four or five weeks ago, where she said um, she has mental issues and she had not been on her medication. I think she, is it may either bipolar or something, where you know whatever, and that's why she's so erratic on the show. I'm like, girl divorce annulment can't do it um it's the day of that the, the, the community event they're throwing for their uh child their organization which ain't they it's not even they don't have nobody signed up for this organization is it real i think it's fake okay they have to sign up i think 50 kids to even make it a real business. If not, they will lose it, okay? And they go on our sad child, and it's a boot. I said, ooh, karma, hey, karma. Them coming outside, well, Troy came outside first and saw the person putting a boot on the car. And they said, we can't talk to you because that's your car. The ribbon goes out there, and she finds out because she had 550 bucks of parking tickets. They put a boot on her, they put a boot on her car. I have never had a boot on my car. Well, I don't have tickets either. Um, but I've seen other people have a boot. And I'm, I cannot imagine coming outside my house, like being outside my house and there being a boot on my car. That is so embarrassing. You know what I'm saying? And they said, well, look, and I, this, well, it was crazy I, I, because I, I've never had one. I didn't know this. He like, you know, there's a number on the thing to call. You call that number and you can pay it, you know, credit card or whatever, and then it'll come off. And you pay it. Or like an app or whatever, and you punch a code in, and it takes it off your car, and you leave it like on a car or whatever, and someone comes up. I was like, that is that is technology, you know. So again, she owed five. She had to pay five hundred and fifty bucks. Um, and she said, my my accountant told me to keep you know like two thousand dollars on the side in case. And thank God because that's where I'm a dude. You need to get the boot off. So it's their anniversary. It's a boot on the car. She's aggravated. I don't like her. Blah, blah, blah. And this is their first anniversary together, as you know, it's for husband and wife, with him being out of prison. And she's been a bitch. He ain't told me a happy anniversary yet. You know what I'm saying? And I, I don't like it. And I'm upset. And don't mess Troy out, girl. This attitude. Attitude. Oh, my God. You know, and they get to the church and they deal with some ice. And then she's pissed because. In the car, she's like, why are you on your phone? Who are you on your phone? Get off your phone. Get off your phone. Got to sneeze. And he's like typing stuff on his phone. But I'm like, why is he aggravating you? Because it was just her aggravating. And when she was like, well, it's our anniversary. <laughs> what is this? Um, it's our anniversary. And he... I'm upset. I'm pissed. Um, just a boot in my car. He 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 hadn't told me happy anniversary. Blah 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 blah. Okay. Then in the car because he did not pull off as soon as she said pull off, pull off, pull off. He's like okay okay. No stop the car. Stop the car. Stop the car. I'm like. She is insane. She's a crazy person. You hear me? And then they switch seats and she's driving. And this is the worst. This is the worst day of my life. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to talk to you. I am done. I don't want to do anything with you. Okay. And you, you're on your phone on our anniversary. I was like, bitch, what? What do you mean? Then once they get out the once they get out the grocery store and get ice, she kicks him out the car and leaves him. He had to get production to take him back to the church. He then goes in the in the damn uh, bathroom at, at the church, calls his mama. Okay, like ma, I need you to please call Theresa Riot. 
because she's mad right now. She's fussing and cussing, whatever. I just need to just talk to her because his mama came to town with their daughter because he wanted to see the daughter Troy. And Yana did not come. So the mama brought the mama been sitting at the at the train station for an hour because she bitching left him with the car. So he doesn't have a way to get his mama. I said, that would child divorce. If you are preventing me from going to get my child and my mama, bitch, we're done. We are done. We are done. And he was saying, like, she's pissed at me. And the whole time, I'm on my phone typing up a happy anniversary note for her. I'm typing what I feel, and she pissed up me, and I ain't even did shit, okay? Um, then he, child, I was like, him begging his mama, please call her, because she just, she's upset, blah, blah, blah. And Mama Kim, like, you know, y- y- Zaria Zariah is the issue, okay? He's going through things, and she has been a bitch. I can't believe this, blah, 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 okay? So the mama's pissed, because, again, she's, we've been waiting an hour, Troy. Where you at, Troy? She's like, please call Zaria Zer- 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 saying Come get you, or at least let me get the car to do that. I'm like, how is she not saying let's go get your daughter any woman or any person who does not respect you as a parent and is not putting your child well-being right up at the top list of priorities i can't be with you and troy you allowing her to not put your child first is your fault she does it because you allow her to do it ain't no way on god's earth i would allow someone to prevent me from going to get my mom and my daughter from the train station. Fuck your ice. Period. You, you, girl. And then when he called the mom, because he, he then called my back. Ma, I'm going to come get you. When she said, we have more things. No, we have bigger things to worry about, Troy. He said, don't do that. Don't play with my daughter. Don't do that. And I didn't leave because the mom said, I'm leaving. We've been waiting over an hour. You took long. We leaving. We ain't coming back. So now he's pissed because his mama leaving, the daughter leaving because she was acting dumb. But I'm like Troy. Wow, she's a bitch. Completely, you are at fault too because your first priority before you was in the car rolling the blunt to smoke weed, before y'all went to the church to add her family what they need for the thing, should have been I have to go get my mother and my daughter. Period. What she would have, girl, she would have been pissed at me. We ride your mama, and so I blame Troy too. And again, that's why God put the damn boot on her car, little bitch. Anyway, and that was the whole episode. Okay, do not forget again, I will be live today at four. I think I put it at four at 4 p.m. to do Love and Marriage Huntsville. Um, and this other gossip chats up that I did on Saturday. Also on, was, that, was it on Thursday? I don't know. But y'all know it's other content up, so go watch it, okay? And that's about all, y'all. They all get on my nerves, but I think it's almost over. So like, comment, share, subscribe. I gotta go. Love y'all. Bye!